Good morning. I'm very pleased to be here. I've been coming to Dubai for about 20 years now, and I tend to come one or twice or sometimes even three times a year. And what I love here is the, impression, the energy, the impression of progress. You can think long term. You, you are not, you know, into short term aspects. And, and every time I come, this place looks a bit different and actually it looks a bit better. So it gives me energy. I love to be here and every time I come, I, I try to bring my wife as well. So we spend some time here. Now, <laughs> the press and Google. Um, it's extremely important for us, as you see here from the picture of our CEO, um, Sundar Pichai, to work with the press. Why? I think there are two main reasons for which the press really matters to us. The number one is we cannot be a search engine and do our job with Android on phones if we don't give access to news and information to people. And news and the press are a very important element in that. So there's a natural fit, a need to work together. The second element I think is important as well is that we live in a world now which is very challenged. We all know, and you know it in particular around this region here, the problem with fake news, uh, the difficulties in defining what quality of information is, and the need to support the future to have actually quality news and access to news for everybody in a way that is, works, that's fair. So we need successful news on the web. It's also important in terms of business. I mean, we have a, uh, about $13 billion of advertising that we develop working with publishers. 70% of them, a bit less than 10 billion, are distributed to publishers. Uh, so our model is also working together. We started that work about six years ago. Actually, I'm one of the first persons who started the work with the news sector six years ago because before to be at Google, I come from the news sector. I was CEO of a company called Lagardère, Hachette, that you may know, L, other magazines and things, for some years. And then I did an LBO with some friends for a small press group. So I've got a minimum of experience of the press and I love the press. And we realized six years ago that there were a series of issues that we needed to face. The first one is the advertising business model is very difficult to be sufficient. It's not sufficient today, maybe outside US and UK. Why is it not sufficient? Because competition increased, because access to news can come more in a more global way. And if you live in a country like the UAE, but also to in Germany or in France or Italy, or you don't have a big enough size so that you can uh, live with only advertising on the web in the press. We realize it's a problem. So we try to work on increasing the value of advertising via programmatic platforms and via more context and more understanding of the user and sharing some data with the press on what we understand from the user. Uh, we tried to work on developing platforms like AMP, Accelerated Mobile Pages, which allow people to access news on the mobile faster in an easier way and with a better, and it's a free technology that we, we, we provided to the press. And, and we did a lot of work on advertising together with our, our partners and, and, and the council of adver that we have created for our digital news initiative, but realized that it's not enough. Advertising cannot be the only business model we support with the press. So we started a couple of years ago to really work on the subscriptions. And we changed the way we approach subscriptions completely. The first change has been to say, it's not for us to decide if people should subscribe or not and when. So the, the paywalls now are completely open. And the choice of what do you present to the user comes to the press. If I am uh, a, a press company, I can decide that subscriptions are proposed immediately after one click, after two click, after five click, I do whatever I feel I have to do. Second part of the business, which is very important, and I think I, I want to insist here because it's the area for me that matters more for the future, is we need to understand when people come into the paywall who they are and what their interests are 
And the more information we have about the people that get on the payroll, the better we can propose subscriptions and make more money. So we decided to share this data with the press. And we have a product that shares this data and allows to manage the funnel to increase the level of subscriptions. We have done some tests with some big press groups like the Financial Times, and we'll, we'll now bring that to, 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 to MENA as well to see what we can do together for this. The third element is the experience must be simple. So you want to have access to, you don't want to compile complex data every time with credit cards and the rest. So we have found ways with the consent of the user to tell them, if you want, you allow us to give to the press group all the information we have on you, your credit card and the rest of it with one click, you can subscribe and make it easier. This is changing subscriptions on, in the press. We believe that this work done together well can completely change the importance of subscriptions and bring it back as being an essential part of the business model. This is something we really want to insist in and is something we'll continue to work on. The third element is more complex and is about the issues we all live with fake news, quality information, and the complexity of that. So we have thought about it, and you know, you all know what happened in the last years on fake news. We started with one initial project, which we called Facts Check. Basically, when a press company, an editor decides, a publisher decides to accept the principle of fact checking and says, I have checked the facts, we will put a label on the search engine and people will know that and certain products could be connected with the fact the facts have been checked and we know how it works. It is having an impact. It's an important initial phase. So this is the work we did for some years and we decided recently to do more um, before I go to those. And, and we launched what we called the Global News Initiative last week in, uh, in New York. And I'm very happy actually to present the new Global News Initiative here a week after. So it's the second time we speak about it, which is important. The Global News Initiative is based on three principles. The number one is we listen to the press and we try to understand together what we can do to make the, the press more successful on the web. In order to achieve that, we have created a group of people that counsel us, the Council of the Global News Initiative, that come from your world and that give us advice and tell us what we should do. Uh, we have to identify one or two companies here to participate to that and help us understand the Middle East. So I'll be working with my colleagues on finding how to do that, but clearly we need the input of the Middle East as well. We need your input. The world you know, needs that as well. So this council will tell us things like, yeah, your product on subscription is good, but change it this way and that way. Or tell us, hey, what you did on advertising is actually nice, but we think you should do more around platforms and you know, how the data are exchanged. So we'll listen and we'll try to improve whatever we do. Those people are invited once a year to come to Mountain View. They see our roadmaps of products and they can help us uh, uh, identify what to do. The second element of it is training. And actually, I'm very happy to announce that it is the first initiative that we will bring to MENA. We commit to train 4,000 journalists by the end of 2019 here. Um, and uh, we will start this work from next week. We have the trainers that are being now uh, prepared to do that. And uh, it's something that we really believe in. What are those trainings? Those trainings are technology-based, explaining to journalists how technology works. Some of them are great experts, but some of them need to understand how technology can impact the way they can, uh, they can actually uh, express themselves or the way they can actually do their job in a more effective way. The second element is about training the journalist on the economic aspects, on how does the revenue models, the business models of the web, so they can understand how better it works and also in, be effective in the business. We don't want to transform journalists into advertisers or subscription people, but we think that the seven level of understanding is necessary for everybody to be effective at that. And the third one is, 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 is connected to the future, imagining how this will evolve. And we share with journalists how we think that all this world we are in uh, will evolve in terms of media and how they can benefit of uh, 
uh, technology to make that happen. So video, for example, and uh, new technologies, VR, and we share this and we, and we create an environment in which they can understand and analyze that. So the trainings are an important element as well. Two last elements before I go to questions, because I really would like to keep uh, four or five minutes for questions, so I'll finish now. Um, I, I spoke about the subscriptions, I spoke about the propensity to subscribe and the importance. I want to finish actually with this. I have a concern that I want to share. It is clear that privacy is important and we need to protect the privacy of people on platforms when they give us data and you have the same thing to do in the press so that your readers when they are on the web, the data, what you know of them is not, you know, shared in ways that is not fair. But we have to be very careful not to build a world where we cannot work together. If we exchange data with you in the press on subscriptions and what people are interested in, you'll be b better at subscriptions. If we can exchange some data and tell you who the people are, you can make more money on advertising or create more context better. And today there is a tendency, I would say in particular in Europe around GDPR and the new laws, to, 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 to see this very compartmented. You know, limit sharing, limit working together. To me, data is the new oil, is the currency for the future. So we'll have to be very careful to create an environment where the progress can come by sharing that. And I believe at Google that sharing data with the press is the best thing we can do to help data to be press to be successful, to be able to live in the new world by understanding the users and being effective. So we will continue to do that work as much as we can, but need your help as well as continue the efforts on defining what quality journalism is, because it is not our job to define what quality journalism is. As a search engine and a technology platform, our job is provide access to users, send you traffic, work with you so that you can access the world. But the decision of what quality is, what exactly is the definition of the promise that the news can make, can only rely on your world. That's why, uh, for the Global Initiative, we want to have councils, we want to work together and make sure that the collaboration is the way for, 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 for Google and the press to build the success of media uh, on the web in the future. I would like to stop here to have a, some minutes for questions because I imagine there will be questions, I hope there will be questions, and I, you know, I think sometimes it's more interesting to answer the questions than try to... Any question about what we discussed? Thank you, madam. Uh,